Welcome to Fairtone Studios. I'm going to tell you how I heat my shed, which will apply to any garden building. I would say there's two things you've got to think about. One is having a heater, and the other one is insulation. I'm going to start with heaters. And so this is my garden shed. It's down the end of my garden. It has power, so obviously you need a way of running power to your whatever you're trying to heat your outdoor office. Um, and I've tried numerous things over the years, starting with fan heaters like this. I wouldn't recommend a fan heater. I mean, I would say it's not very safe to lift, leave this alone in your shed. It's a bit of a fire hazard. And when you're in here for sort of eight, nine hours a day, it really dries the air out and it's not a very comfortable environment. So I moved over to ceramic panel heaters and I'm going to show you which one or ones I've bought on Amazon, um, just so you have an idea of how I heat it. There are two heaters that I've tried. The first one was made by Von House, and these are flat panel heaters. So they're really thin, they're about 10 mil thick, they go on the wall, um, and I haven't had any problems with these. And this one, the first one, Von House, it was about 35 quid, lasted two years, um, stopped working. The second one is made by Netta. Now I bought the large one, which they stopped doing, so, but they still sell the medium one. It's 50 quid. and it's fantastic. I've accidentally left it on before and come in and the, the room's been over 40 degrees, which was like tropical. It was horrendous. So I do recommend these. I think they're far less of a fire hazard. It's a nice warmth. I mean, people have slept in here in my studio. I mean, I've slept in here before and it's just a nice warmth. One thing I'd recommend to go with one of these ceramic panel heaters would be a, a thermostat you plug into the wall. So you plug the thermostat into the wall, set a temperature. So if your room drops below that temperature, the heater clicks on. Otherwise you have to remember to turn it on and off and uh, that's not ideal. So let's see if I can find the thermostat that I bought. Yeah, this thing. So you plug this into the wall. I've set mine to 15 degrees, plugs into a socket, has the temperature, on it so you just press up and down till it's set right plug your heater in it's so simple and then you just leave i mean i've set mine to 15 degrees about three years ago or whenever i started buying these kind of heaters um and i've had no problems at all absolutely fantastic now i would say would you can have heat in a shed but let's move on to insulating insulation wise more is definitely more my shed walls are a foot thick so i have the outside shiplap on the shed, and then I have two inches of polystyrene or PIR board, so that's like Celotex and Kingspan, that's that yellow stuff. And then on top of the stud work, so the three by two framework the shed's built out of, I have another layer of that, so polystyrene or Kingspan, over the entire lot. And that goes for the ceiling, the walls. And then inside of that, I have another wall, which is insulated with, I think it's uh, acoustic fiberglass, and then, then it's my internal MDF, which is moisture resistant MDF. So my walls are a foot thick. There's two walls and a cavity. There's also two inches under the floor. You probably don't have to go to that extent, but it does help a lot. This really does hold the heat, even when it's boiling hot. The other room of the shed gets really hot and this one stays at like considerably cooler. It takes a lot longer to, longer to warm up. Um, and between the joists, so this is on six by two joists. Between those, there's 10 inches of insulation just squashed down. And then there's two inches, so there's, then there's um, plywood, and there's two inches of polystyrene, then my chipboard internal floor. So this is properly done. I mean, it's got, it's got windows with window boxes in, so it's too hot, I can open those. But I would recommend doing at least, you know, between your shed, the walls, all the timbers on the walls, I would put maybe two inches of polystyrene or uh, any kind of fiberglass, so anything that's thermal. And then on the face of everything, I'd go definitely go two inches of whatever. It doesn't matter if it's polystyrene or Kingspan. I think Kingspan's better for thermal reasons, so the yellow PIR board. But polystyrene is almost as good and it saves you a load of money. But I wouldn't just go put a heater in a shed because the heat's just going to go straight out. And then I'd recommend boarding it, maybe plasterboard it, and make sure you've got power in there so you can plug your heater in. So yeah, that is how I heat my shed and I've heated it for years. It is as simple as insulate it properly, plug in a thermostat on the wall, plug in your heater, and you're good to go. I'd probably recommend getting a fire alarm in there just in case there is a fire. Maybe a Nest one so it gives you a notification. So that's gonna be the next stage. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please drop me a comment. If you've got a shed or a, any kind of outbuilding you're trying to heat, 
you know, I've talked to you, I've, I've got loads of, in fact, so many of my friends have recording studios in sheds, so we've all got the same battle trying to keep it warm. So yeah, let me know what your situation is and whether you think this is a good idea and what you'd do. Yeah, drop me a comment and please like, subscribe and thanks for watching.